and it blew up. It actually blew up. These are true tales of my African adventures. May this inspire you, deter you, caution you, and above all, entertain you. Well, hi everybody. Um, here is a python story. Now, um, I have many python stories because they were and still are one of my favorite snakes and I'm particularly fond of the African rock python, also called the scrub python, savanna python and so on. Um, they can eat, eat large items. They're designed to eat very big things. Uh, we had a python, a very big one at one stage, and it could eat a four or five month old calf. So in the district when a calf died, the farmers would phone me and we'd go pick it up and place it in front of the snake's tunnel. He had a big tunnel leading to a large lair where he lived in a big enclosure. And he would come out and eat it. It's almost unbelievable to see how that mouth stretches over the animal, gets it in, in, into its body. And then it will lie in a coiled up position, sunny every day in the sun, to warm up the body, to aid digestion at night, curl up and retain some warmth in its coils. It's a wonderful thing to see. Um, I actually saw a picture of a lady in Indonesia being cut out of a reticulated python. That was bizarre. It was very uncomfortable to watch. You know, I'm, uh, I can be quite sensitive and uh, I must say that I was very sensitive to that because the family had lost um, the mother, wife, and she was inside this python. Usually snakes can't swallow human beings that easily because of our shoulders. You know, they run at 90 degrees like that and uh, the snake needs a gradual expansion going outwards in order to get over a large object and if it hits the shoulders of a human it can't easily get over. It may not stop him from killing you though to try. But this lady got eaten and uh, they cut her out of it. Terrible terrible situation. But the story I want to tell you is very unusual. Now there was a, a German farmer in Namibia, Southwest Africa as it used to be called. It's on the west coast uh, of Lower Africa and uh, right uh, uh, near South Africa. We have a border between us obviously. And he has a farm right up in the north and his farm has many cobras, mambas, pythons and so on. And we went there more than once to catch and remove, not to keep, but just to remove very big pythons because they were eating his calves. Um, they were near where the cattle walked and every now and then it would catch a calf, which is eating a pile of money for the farmer. He asked us to come again and we went there and the first day I caught quite a big mamba. That was good and then we were going to start tracking down one or two of these big pythons. Whilst we were driving through the bush quietly along the dirt roads he told us a story. He said a number of years ago he was walking in the bush and these farmers know how to walk. They are tough farmers. They are tough, they're strong, they can walk without water for a great distance. In the sun, very hot. Um, sometimes they'll have a rifle, sometimes they won't. And they'll be looking, checking their fences, checking their cattle, just looking at the game, etc. And he was walking along in this fashion when he heard an explosion near him. So this gave him a bit of a shock and he first he crouched down and uh, wanted to know what this explosion was and so he thought he'd wait just a little bit and there was no further movement, no further sound so he got up and he started moving in the direction of the explosion and the bush was quite thick so he really had to look around 
to try and find what had happened. And he was searching through all the dense, uh, low trees and shrubs when he caught the smell of something decomposing. And he followed the smell and came to a small clearing under a, a small tree which had a lot of undergrowth around it and there in front of him he met the most unusual sight. There was a large python which had eaten an oryx, a chemspok, a young chemspok but a big young chemspok probably just at the limit of what the snake could swallow and it was very hot at that time of the year. So the gases inside the oryx had expanded the animal inside its stomach to a, a, a greater size. The stomach had become distended of the dead oryx to the extent that the skin uh, of the python could no longer contain it. And it blew up. It actually blew up. It burst the snake's skin, split it open a long way and then of course the uh, rotten smell of the contents of the stomach of the oryx wafted out and he was able to follow the smell and find this scene in front of him. First time he'd heard of it or seen it I had never heard of it or seen it, although I know it does happen. What an unusual thing to find. Hey, by the way, I do have Patreon, so you can join me there too.